I'm interested in, I'm interested to ask if there's Judith of Kingston, she goes to the National Theatre School and she becomes, a, she writes a play and then she becomes a writer from Canada. The reaction of you writing in a Canadian community as you feel your way through with reviews or not and then people being interested in your writing. And then there is the outside Canada, that your plays are done outside Canada as well. How do, tho how do they affect you your career as a writer from Canada for Canadians and then now an international growing audience, a growing international audience of, oh, there's this writer from Canada, Judith. How, does that change your approach to writing, who you are? I think that with Palace in the End, I think I felt quite uh, protectionist culturally for quite a while because I, when I'd come up in university and high school, it was all American plays and British plays and I mean, faculty would even say there are no Canadian plays, and I think we did one old-fashioned Robertson Davies play, and he was a wonderful novelist, but he wasn't the best playwright. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I, I, this was just so enraging, and uh, there were no Canadian, as you know, no Canadian place names in anything. We were completely invisible, and I had been born here, but grew up in the states from two to age two to ten in Connecticut and then came here at well, almost 12, 2 to 11. And I think because 12 to 20 is so formative, I really took on um, my, being Canadian. My dad was Canadian, my mom was uh, Australian. Um, and I couldn't stand it that we were so invisible. So I wanted to write about Kingston, and that was the world I knew. I barely even came to Toronto growing up in Kingston. We went to New York sometimes, but not Toronto. And. Uh, those place names, that place, and I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I was really just channeling, which, as I said, I have a sort of talent for. And so I was doing it, and I, I remember when the baby died, because that did happen the summer I was working as an one of those wonderful make-work jobs, assistant to a social worker, and I learned so much. This uh, is the baby died. Yeah. That leads to Crackwalker and the baby dying. That's crack right, and, and I remember phoning a friend and saying, oh, my God, I don't think this is a comedy anymore. This, the baby asserted itself, himself. The death of the baby asserted itself through me in that play. And I was just this goof writing funny dialogue because right. I, had a kind of, I kind of could do that dialogue. Um, I picked it up easily. And suddenly this happened. It became something else altogether. You know, people, Marxists would say, this is clearly a Marxist play. You're a visionary. I hear all, especially from the French, would say things like this. I go, who, me, kind of thing. But I, something in me allowed the screen doors uh, ripped open, allowed this to come through and assert itself, and then I learned from that process. But when the English respond to a play that oh, you yeah. do, when the Germans yeah, respond yeah, to a play exciting. that you do, when the French, does that trigger different things in you? I'm proud because... In a play, language is so much of it. I would say it's a third of its power because it is wall-to-wall -wall words in, in my plays, in texty plays. And the poetry of, of, of the voices is hugely important. You, the idiom I choose, if I see says red instead of black or you know, Simpson Street instead of Albany. Right. Uh, and so obviously that's gone. So it's just the two-thirds of the play you have. I'm so sure Tremblay in, in French is, sorry. So when it's translated into German, are you at all curious to how that German translator tried to reimagine the, the language that you use? Yeah, used? and I, I, I ask, some, sometimes I've sat with people in, in French, I've sat with them, and especially in French I'll, or Spanish too, I'll think, oh my God, we're only here? Uh, because it takes them longer to say things in those languages. The Polish version of Lion in the Streets was three and a half hours, and when I did it was two hours with a 15-minute intermission. <laughs> so I, I don't know if it was a lot of director silent scenes or what he right. did, but yeah. And do you go and watch them in uh, German and Polish? Much. No, because all you know, you only a free trip sort of when I was younger, <laughs> but now I don't have any time. Right. And you just go and sit there and smile and go, wonderful, <laughs> you know. But it's boring. Even though it's yours, it's boring because you don't understand it. I'm sort of uh, fishing, asking, because I'm interested in Canadian voices in the world. Right. And we're quite versed with the struggle to have Canadian voices in Canada, in our theatres, in our television, yeah. our whatever. But Canadian voices in the world, meaning we are adding our voice to how politics works in the world. That's or right. Art works, or yeah. narrative works in the world. Yeah. 
and there goes George's plays, there goes David mm. French's plays, there goes Judith's mm. plays. Oh, it's interesting that Palace of the End pissed them off a bit. A couple of UK? Americans, yeah, at the Travers were quite furious at me. The, the Scottish weren't, uh, and the English. Uh, same with in New York. I think one of the, the review in the New Yorker, he liked it, but he was sort of like, and who does this Canadian think they are? There was a bit of that, yeah, that she's not American. I'm an artist, so I, you know, and it's global. It's global now, so that's what I was getting to with protectionism, is that I don't feel protectionist anymore culturally. I don't feel I have to mention Canada. So now if I write something, the thrill is set in the U.S. simply because the character that I was inspired by, Harriet Johnson, lived in Savannah. And I wasn't going to change that because that's what I, I was feeling her that way. Right. And it wasn't because I might get more productions. Although, that being said, you will get more productions. Unfortunately, Canada isn't sexy the way some places are to people. They, they, I mean, they have done plays of mine that are very Canadian, but uh, if they, I was... They being uh, states? The states and all around, you know, the world, the like UK, states, Australia. But Palace of the End, which doesn't have any Canadian references, is my most produced play of all. Um, I mean, Crack Walker Line in the Streets, Perfect Pie, they've done a lot, Habitat, but it's my most produced, and it doesn't have any mention of... That's kind of sad, yeah. But look at Alice Monroe's stories. There couldn't be more specific right. to Clinton. So that doesn't stop me. It just, if that occurs in the play, but I'm not going to be afraid to be an Iraqi woman. I, I'm ready. I think, you know, I have the craft, I have the art. I can do it. I have to do my research. Right. I like to meet somebody. I mean, to write the Iraqi woman, my neighbor happens to be Iraqi. I was really lucky. I sat with her for an afternoon and said, can you talk to me about what it is to be Iraqi, an Iraqi woman? And do you know any historical figures? And she, she translated something from the Arabic for me, an account of tortures, which I, I didn't take any notes. I just listened, and then I went home. And I had to catch a plane, I think, in three hours from then. And I wrote the whole monologue wow. from memory. But I couldn't have done it if I hadn't spent the afternoon with her. I have to get the buzz from a person. So as you as a Canadian writer, or writer from Canada, listen to these international stories, or stories not from Canada, and then you choose to write them, do you think you are writing them in, I don't want to say a Canadian way, in a way that if an American writer had written A Palace of the End, uh, it would have been different, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it would have. And so what is it of you who have lived and grown, apart from the years in Connecticut, in a kind of, a, I don't want to say a Canadian point of view, a Canadian yeah, palette, a Canadian know. key signature, what do you bring to that story that is not reproduced by an English writer, by a Carol Churchill, by a French writer, by a German writer, and by an American? What is that? I, I mean, is it... Is it the part of Canada that's that's Trudeau, you know, doing the pirouette, so, and bit daring to be good buddies with Castro? It's that part of Canada. It's not that what people think of as wishy-washy or, um, you know, it's the part that does interfere, that takes our makes our own flag. Um, that that says we're not going to Iraq, that crutch in. Right. But it's not, you know, right now the way Canada is, I don't even want to identify with, with Stephen Harper and it's so appalling. And we're not, you know, our, the, what, our, our place in the world is, I'm so ashamed of it right now. So I feel like a global citizen. I, I love the landscape and the place, but, you know, when, when, didn't he, the Kyoto, he opted out of like all these things and that, mm -hmm. that's representing all of us. Right. And it, it's just very upsetting. And Afghanistan? <laughs> 